Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. gentlemen how goes it how are y'all doing this is the truth seeker podcast i'm your host truth seeker i'm gonna be by myself today um i was supposed to have a guest but they couldn't uh make it today they said the kids got dropped off at the house and there'd be kids running around in the background so we had to reschedule so i'm gonna do a q a today uh interact with the chat my homies and uh i've got i've got an idea about some things i want to uh speak about that's kind of been on my heart the last couple of days and you know, we some things we've been talking about on other programs, and uh, sometimes you don't know what to speak on. You don't know what the Spirit is saying to deliver a message to others. You want to help people. You want to inspire people. But usually um, when we're going through things in our own life, it's what the, the uh, uh, other people are going through it too. You know, we think we're the only ones. We think we're the only ones who have been through this kind of stuff. But other people around us are experiencing very similar things, and a lot of times it's principles that we have to learn we're not above reproach we need help we go through these same cycles and stuff and that's what kind of gives us the authority to to speak on it we've been through the stuff we've been through these uh situations and testings and trials and we can tell you how to navigate through them most of the time you know it's that's wisdom wisdom uh we're asking for wisdom on how to apply the knowledge do the knowledge so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit i'm gonna get started with some of that and then, like I said, I'm going to be taking uh, uh, messages and stuff from the chat. So if anybody has a question about anything, you know, nothing's un- untouched. So nothing's off topic. So we'll get into some of that. I want to say a huge shout out to everybody supporting my work and enabling this podcast. You are enablers. This show is listener supported, listener funded and back. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Everybody supporting on Patreon and whatever means you're supporting as well thank you guys for believing in my work and so i want to give a shout out to some of the newest patrons that we have here within the last week or so um isis gate shout out i believe isis gates in our discord as well austin kerr shout out to you brother thank you for your support um herbert gibson the third my brother so my brother came on big herb and uh uh became a patron shout out to herb man thank you so much for supporting brother and uh literally Thank you. So, and everybody else supporting my my work. Thank you guys so much in whatever shape, fashion, or form that you're doing it, but especially those on Patreon. If you'd like to support, head on over to patreon.com backslash truthseeker, and there you get access to my entire discography of music. 
all of the new stuff that I'm working on is uploaded there as soon as it's done, uh, months before it's available for the general public. So you get access to some cool stuff. Also, our Thursday night School of the Mystics, you get access to that uh, by supporting. So uh, that's that in and of itself is, is enough, man. Uh, that is so fun. And uh, the community aspect to what we're building here with the podcast, hang out with us live, not just me, but also the community. Um, so, yeah, that's tonight, 7 p.m. Central. As every Thursday night, we're doing that. So, yep, you get access to all kinds of cool stuff. Patreon.com backslash TrueSeeker. Um, every Wednesday night, I've been doing for about over a year, year and a half, um, been doing a show on Wednesday night with Christy Lee. Tap in, tune in. So it's a good friend of mine, and so she has her own um podcast or radio show where she takes callers and she does psychic readings and things like that and energy healing and uh prophetic utterances and stuff so i've been assisting her with that and uh just started streaming it back on youtube it's like we share the links out on facebook and email and things like that for people to join and people will go and, and blog talk has its own audience and stuff people join us there so just the last two weeks i just started streaming it from my end what it looks like here, what I'm doing. And so a lot of people on YouTube, you know, I guess it's their first time knowing that we're doing this every Wednesday. been doing it almost two years now. And so, yeah, those archives are available. If you want to check that out, tapintunein.com is Christy Lee's website. And so you can check out everything we've done over there. And I'm going to be continuing to stream as well on my end. So every Wednesday night, we open up the phone lines, make ourselves um, available, accessible for prayer, healing, and just getting in the spirit together. It's good stuff. So we did that last night. There's two um, episodes or sessions, if you want to call that, on, uh, on on YouTube available for you to go back and check. So that's good stuff. A lot of people didn't know we do that. So we do that every every Wednesday. And um, really interesting to watch the chat last night. We're trying to... Uh, you know, get into the spirit and get into prayer and things like that. And then like I have the chat open. So, you know, I'm watching the chat a little bit and I can't always watch the chat. You know, some people come in to troll. Some people come in to be silly or whatever the case is. We are a family, man. We're a tight knit community here. So, uh, you know, um, I may have grace on you. The chat might not. So uh, they will, you know, ban people if needed and so people get out of line or try to be silly or be funny or whatever sometimes the chat you know the admins in the chat will uh take advantage of that and, and it will block people so be careful chatting and be being silly and stuff like that because they will block you um we don't really tolerate any uh, foolishness and crazy stuff but um i may have a little bit more grace you know on you than the chat does i i, I have to say that so uh they may be may, way i will have long suffering and put up with you a little bit longer to chat with any, any signs of any foolishness the chat might block you. So just letting you know that everybody hanging out with us on YouTube, they, the chat has a mind of its own. It's its own living, moving organism itself and some really cool people, um, a part of that. So, um, I wanted to, and I, and I see people are, are already dropping some, um, comments and stuff like that. So I'm going to uh, try to address that here shortly, but I wanted to start off with a couple of scriptures, man, just something that's been on my heart that I've had to kind of check my own self with, man. Um, and I mentioned this a little bit last night on, on Christy Lee's show, but, uh, you know, a lot of times we want to take matters into our own hands, right? When somebody wrongs us, when somebody takes something from us or someone says something against, against us, we want to defend ourselves we want to make it known that, hey, you're taking my kindness for weakness. I know I'm a, I ain't no killer, but don't push me. You know, I'm, I'm a Christian, but I still, you know, you know, I might push back the next time you shove type deal. And, um, you know, it, stuff happens, man. We've been wronged and, and messed over and things like that. And, you know, that flesh still rises up. And there's many times that I want to get in the flesh. You know, we talk about spirituality, healing, modalities, ascension, all of this beautiful stuff. But we're human, you know, we're regular people, you know, and so we're not above anybody. We're down here on the on the same level playing field with with everybody. So there's nothing, you know, all, we're, we're tested and tried in those same ways. And so when someone takes from you or wrongs you and um, sometimes you want to get in the flesh and, you know, I've. It, it happens, man. People steal from us. I've, I've, man, I can, you know, this whole spiritual walk and things I've been taken advantage of, man. Um, 
giving people you, you, most of the time giving people money before they come through with what they promise whether it's been through features with sp- so-called spiritual hip-hop artists i'll pay them for a verse and then i never get the verse um pay somebody for another thing or whatever never get it recently paid somebody for a video and uh that was almost it's coming it's like five months ago and haven't got it have put out filmed and put out uh, videos with other people um, since then, and then haven't even this person won't even return my calls anymore. You want? I want to jump to the flesh. My mind is working. Let me let people, and, and and for good reason. You know, I like to let people know. Hey, watch out for this guy. He does shady business. Stay away from him. So my mind starts working. I want to expose them. I want to put out a video. You know what I'm saying? All of this kind of stuff. Just so when people. Google their name, this comes up, hey, don't work with this guy, give him a bad review, blah, 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 all of this stuff. Um, Because, you know what I'm saying, right is right, wrong is wrong. Somebody takes from you, somebody steals from you, like, it's bad business, man. And I I point out, um, last night, like, when I was in witchcraft, right, when I was in the occult, like, really deep, dark occultism, like, I stole something from a warlock, and it was a bad decision. He had spirits that went out and and got the stuff and brought it back and tormented me and other people who wronged them. They had spirits that were sent out to do that. And this is talking. This is somebody dealing with the dark arts. And so you don't cross a witch. You don't steal from a witch. I'm letting you know we are talking about what works and what don't work. Stealing from witches, someone who really knows their stuff. I'm not, you know, somebody who really knows how to summon spirits and things like that. It can be done. Don't cross that person, right? And so how much more should you not cross the righteous, right? So the righteous are just taken advantage of, or you can take advantage of me because I'm a spiritual person, because I'm going to pray that I don't repay evil for evil, those type of things, right? Those are the principles that we live by, especially if we, you know, try to follow Christ and his teachings and his example, right? There's so many scriptures that talk about that. I'm going to get into a couple of them. But the whole thing with that, man, is to know that like, it is not a good idea to cross the righteous. It is not a good idea to mess with those who are servants of the Most High. Even though we might not do nothing to you, the end result of that person who does that is never good. It's never good. Never. Do not do it, man. Whoever it is, don't cross somebody. Don't plot evil against them. Whatever. Don't try to mess up their family, get into their home. Like, whatever it is, don't cross the righteous. That's a warning. It's a warning in the Bible, right? Um, the scripture says in, in Psalm 105, 15, and we've heard this a lot in the church, but it says, do not touch my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Don't mess with God's anointed because messing with them, you have to answer to the father. You have to, And he is like a bear, a mama bear robbed of her, cub, her cubs. God comes out. He don't play. It's, it's never good. Even though we may not plot against you, even though we may not throw hands with you, whatever it is, we're praying against that, Lord, help us. The Bible says that God, that it says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and that God will go out and he'll make He'll make it right. Even though I lost $300 on this on this CD or, or this, this video shoot, um, I believe the way the universe works, the way God works, he's going to bring it back. He's going to bring it back, however way he does it, he sees it fit. If I don't respond, if I don't go track this person down or take it upon myself, because trust me, I thought about it. I wanted to. I can. Many different things I can do. And I've done it in the past. You know what I'm saying? And it's caused more problems because that's not our battle. The battle is mine, saith the Lord. Let the Lord fight your battles for you. Um, And so that you just kind of pull your hands out of the mix and say, look, it's not mine. I'm not going to respond like that. They're trying to get you to respond like they would respond. And it's not it's not up to us to do that. It's not. So that's Psalm 105, 15. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Uh first Peter three and nine. I'm gonna let's see, I'm gonna read the um the King James version. It says, Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, 
but, but contrawise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, ye should inherit a blessing. That if you don't repay evil for evil, but turn around and bless those who curse you, that's hard, man. Because we want to, you know, we want to respond, but we have to, we have no dog in the fight. You're not messing with me. You're messing with the angels. You don't cross a witch, right? How much more would you not want to cross the righteous? Those who are fight, or who, who have heaven fighting for them, making things right. I'm telling you that the, the end result god does what he does and it's not that we want god to punish that person you know we hope we hope god you know what i'm saying blesses them man and changes their heart and whatever we hope that they make it right you know what i'm saying that they would come and make it right it doesn't always happen but it's never good do not repay evil for evil don't retaliate with insults when people insult you instead pay them back with a blessing that is what God has called you to do, and he will bless you for it. First Peter 3 and 9. So these, these, these are promises of God. These are secrets of God. I, I, I really believe these are universal laws. If you do it, it works. It really does. If you pull your hand out of it, obviously, you, if you respond and you try to track this person down, you know, um, you may get in trouble. You know, you may get into the trouble with the law. You may get in the road rage. Somebody cuts you off and you want to cut them off. And, and just seeing people take stuff like it can it can escalate really quick and you can be in trouble really quick with a tweet. You can respond with a tweet. I've seen people do that. Trust me, I have Christian rapper friends who would see things that they don't like that other pastors were doing, that other Christians were doing. And they just, man, their Facebook is like, this is somebody who's into the spirit, into God. And then the next moment. I mean, they're cursing people out through Facebook posts like dirty dog stuff, like demonic <laughs> utterances are on their Facebook, man. And uh, and you can't undo that. You know, you can't take those words back. You can't undo that once people see it. They're like, you got to watch this guy, man. You know, he's, you know, then they, then they want to minister. Then they want to say, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No, man. You can't do that. You can't take that stuff back. And so responding to the flesh, responding without thinking, responding to the ego is never the way to go. Um, another similar scripture, Romans twelve seventeen, uh, recompense no man for e evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. I love, I love this one. Um, if it be possible, as much as it lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Live peaceably with all men, not just Christians, not just Muslims, not just Hindus, not just spiritual people, with all men, as much as you have the ability to do so, do it. To me, that I, I rock the coexist symbol. I got it on my, or I had it on my old car, and I caught a lot of flack from my Christian church friends or whatever because it's got all these religious symbols and stuff or whatever. And, uh, you know, they're like, oh, you're promoting those religions. And I'm not, it's not promoting those religions. It's saying live peaceably with these men. That's not biblical. What do you mean? If it Romans 12, 17, 21, uh, 17 through 21, if it be possible, as much as it lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. That's coexist, man. Coexist with these people, man. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place but rather give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine. I will repay saith the Lord. So don't think that these people go um, unpunished. Don't think that these people just get away with it. They stole from you. They did you wrong. They've been gossiping about you. Trust me. Those people that are in the churches or whoever they are that are going out gossiping about you to their friends. They gossip to their other friends about those friends. It's just, I mean, it goes on. So it's what happens. I'm trying to read the uh, text here. Some people saying they're seeing a black screen. I don't know. So anyway, let me know if this, this stream's working. Um, but yeah, we are live right now. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, 
Thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Man, that's that's hard. That's hard because we want to repay evil with evil. We want to go above and beyond. We always want to get the last word in the f- debates on Facebook. You got to learn the last word is not worth it. As people call you out, blah, blah, blah. You got to stay in your character. Never let somebody call you or pull you out of your character. Don't let them do it. So I just bless you with that, man. Um, don't respond. Don't fight upon your own accord man and it's tempting and i have to remind myself there's different things to do you can pray pray for that person um release them have a time of releasing and just whether you want to sit sit down and close your eyes and meditate take in that breath breathe it out and when you breathe it out release release them those thoughts release those thoughts release those words off of you those word curses release it all I've had to do it. I've had to release friends. I've had to release these people who have wronged me because it, they're just living rent free in my head. I'm thinking about ways to do them. I'm thinking about what they did to me, all of this stuff. And I say, you know what? I can't do that. I can't. How am I going to? You have to be, if you're going to walk in the spirit as a as a, a vessel, you have to be clean and you have to be holy. You can't You can't be trying to to heal you can't be trying to give words of wisdom and knowledge and encouragement and hear from the holy spirit and speak that out into others lives if there's this monkey stuff in the pipes it doesn't flow right you can't receive and then there's pornography stuck here you can't receive and then there's bitterness ray it stuff gets filtered through and it messes up the way it comes out you have to keep your hands clean and your heart pure that's my rule that's my rule I won't I won't deal with any of it. I've 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 made that commitment to myself. I don't I can't flow. I have to make things up if it's not about the Holy Spirit and what the Spirit is doing. I don't want no part of it. I don't want to come to your church. I don't want to be a part of your meeting. I don't want to meet your psychic friends if it's not the Spirit of God moving in them and through them. I don't want to be a part of it, right? And so that goes for us as well. When our hands are clean and our hearts are pure, then we become an open vessel and we become a conduit for heaven to be able to bring heaven to earth on earth as it is in heaven. As the scripture says, we're that conduit. You got to be able to flow in the spirit. And if there's stuff clogging up the pipes, it's not going to flow. It's like an artery to the heart of God, quite literally. And if it's blocked, blocked up, if it's clogged, it's not going to flow. The blood is not going to flow. Amen. That's wisdom, guys. Um, Let's see. Someone um, asked a question a while ago. Okay, I'm going to read this from um, Brandon, uh, Brandon Higgins, brother. Uh, He says, this is, uh, he's quoting a scripture, Deuteronomy 32, 35. It's a good scripture, good chapter. "To, To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Yep. Chris Garner says, when you wrong another, you invite recompense. The level you wrong is paid back in increasing intensity. Yeah, man. It's it's karma. You know, you want to call it karma. Except I don't think you get it, you know, three lifetimes from now. I think you get it in this lifetime. Um, it's called you reap what you sow, seed time and harvest, whatever you put back, put out into the world is going to come back to you, you know, speaking evil of people, gossiping, you gossip about people, it's going to come back to you. You're going to have people gossip about you. That's how I learned to stop gossiping. I had whole churches gossiping about me. That doesn't, you can feel it, man. When you're uh, empathic and intuitive, whole churches gossiping about you to people who don't even know you. So you meet people and they know you and you don't know them and you got to figure out who, who told them about you and all this kind of stuff. Um, that gets weird, man. It really gets weird. And, uh, so yeah, whatever you do, man, it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, given back unto you. And it talks about being pressed down and shaken and run it over for that to be true for the blessings it's going to be true with the curses as well deuteronomy around around those chapters i believe 32 as well talks about the blessings and the curses and so for one thing to be true 
the opposite has to be true as well. For there be fruits of the spirit that are good. If you spend time in the spirit of Christ, then the opposite has to be true as well. If you spend time in the flesh, if you spend time entertaining dark stuff, demonic stuff, stuff that is not edifying and lifting up the body or lifting up yourself. If you spend time with that, there's fruit that comes as well. And the Bible talks about it, right? It talks about the, the fruits of the spirit and what we can call the fruits of the flesh. Fits of rage, man. That's a that's one of them. You're not spending time with the Lord. You're not spending time in the spirit and in prayer. Fits of rage. You blow up easily. Hey, hold on. Why'd you just punch that wall? Why did you do that? Hold on. Let's talk. Why are you screaming? Why are you yelling? Hold on. Something's up. You spend time in the spirit. You're going to produce these these fruits, man. And they're beautiful. And people partake of those fruits. And you want to hang around those people. Just like for there to be blessings, there has to be curses. For, the, for one thing to be true, the opposite has to be true as well. Um, let's go through here some more. Uh, Christy Phillips, just thinking, I want to watch YouTube before work. Thinking, I hope True Seeker is on live for my birthday. Happy birthday, uh, Christy. Um, clicked on and the universe has spoken. Synchronicities. Love it and your work. Much love. Thank you, uh, Christy Phillips. Happy birthday again. And uh, man, the sync. And you know what? Chris, Chris Barris, you know, before I went live, he was like, man, talk about synchronicities. Well, you always talk about synchronicities, right? Yeah, um, and they're increasing, especially when you're on the right path. Now, I wouldn't get discouraged if you're not seeing them, but there's seasons where they come and they're just everywhere and they're weird. And it's strange things that the TV is saying, the things you're saying, or the you think something, then it's on Facebook or as you're scrolling and or you hear terms or phrases or songs. I remember it used to be songs for me. Back in the day, man, I would uh, think of a song that I hadn't heard in years. And I would think of this song and then all of a sudden it would come on the radio and hadn't heard it in years. It started weirding me out when I started getting into the prophetic ministry and uh, and hearing the voice of God and seeing in, in the churches, they call it confirmation. They don't use synchronicity. They're trying to borrow some of the new age stuff. They start. I think the churches are starting to use the word downloads. I got these downloads from God, you know, which, you know, it's interchangeable, I believe. But I started to see those synchronicities and signs in my life and it began to kind of freak me out. Um, so much so that I called the radio station because when um, a song would be going off, I would sing the next song before it came on and it started happening like crazy. I would say it two seconds later, boom, the song's on. And I was able to predict the next songs that were coming on the radio. And, I, and it, all this was new to me. I didn't know what I was doing. It's just my imagination. I don't know how this stuff works. I called the radio station. I said, hey, look, is there like a uh, a loop, like a rotation that every day you guys play all of these songs together? And I'm learning what's the next one. Like, am I learning? And she said, no, uh, you know, this this is new and I play I play different songs every day and we we change up the format and everything and I was like, Wow. And I just kinda explained to her it was a Christian radio station and uh I told told her what's going on and and she's saying, Well the Lord's trying to speak to you and maybe those titles of those songs, maybe that word those words that were coming to me that God wanted to speak to me. And so that was the beginning of it for me. The next the next steps was going to visit my brother in prison at the time and um meeting him uh, there and uh, and I would look and and see all of these people meeting with their families and I knew why they were in prison, right? I looked at them and I said he did this and he's in here for that and he is in here for that and it was scary stuff and I was like I started to get overwhelmed and um, and I started to pray against it. Most of the time, it, this stuff scares you. You start praying against it, right? And so. Um, because I felt like I was judging these people. I felt like, man, I don't even know these people. Why am I judging this man for being locked up and just making these things up about these people? But it wouldn't go away as much as I prayed against it. I'm trying to figure out what it was, man. And it, it it's it's kind of overwhelming. Um, but the, the Bible says this, a spiritual man judges all things. And so you're able to see in the spirit if you're spiritual. You're able to pass righteous judgments and a, a judgments according to the fruit, according to the spirit. 
those who walk in the spirit will not um, commit the deeds of the flesh. You won't be committing those deeds. Let's see. Um, go through these questions here. Somebody asked me about hermeticism and I didn't. I think it's on up some more. Um, I don't know if I can find it or not, but, um, okay. So Akia says, uh, what are your thoughts on the her hermetic philosophy? Um, the most I know about hermeticism are the, um, seven hermetic principles and I love them. That's why I haven't really studied a lot of the, uh, hermetic tradition, but those seven hermetic principles I love, and I've, I've, um, talked about them a little bit and I think that they're good. Um, I think that they're righteous. Let's see if I can read some of these. Um, if I can find them, I'll read these out for people who have no idea what they are. And so this is, um, really my extent on it though. I just, I, I like these, um, the overview and I have, um, you know, revelation on each one, especially when it comes to, uh, the scriptures or whatever, all this stuff ties together for me. Um, so there's the, the principles, but let me find the chart here. Let's see. Seven hermetic principles. Here's the chart. Let me just pull this up. I really like this chart. It's pretty good. I don't know if I can, if it's going to show up, probably not. And it's kind of small. Um, Oh, Lord, I can't read that. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Bing, bing. Okay, I'm pulling it up right now. This is from uh, thirdmonk.net, but this is an image that circulates on the internet for those of, of you who are watching it. For those who aren't, I'll read it. But are glyphs for the seven hermetic laws of ancient Kemet or Kemet. Principle. The first one is principle of mentalism. The all is mind. The universe is mental. For me, that's, um, you know, we've been talking about consciousness, your, your consciousness, your thoughts create your reality, those type of things. And so that kind of fits into that with me. Um, the principle of correspondence as above, so below as below. So above as within, so without. On earth as it is in heaven, these principles. Um, your you, your your body is a mirror image of the heavens, of the throne room of God. The Bible says that the, uh, the, that God dwelleth not in temples made with hands, but your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and your body is fashioned after that. And I need to do a deep teaching on that. Um, everything in your body, your heart is the throne of God, your rib cage, your whole anatomy mirrors heaven. So that's on a physical perspective of, of, of the throne room of God. Your body is the throne of God. And it also um, relates spiritually as well as above, so below. Shoot. Another way that relates for me is like when we're talking about UFOs and we're talking about angels and these different types and hierarchies and what they look like and it gets weird and especially when you're getting into you know when you're trying to connect the dots there and you maybe get into ufology and you're talking about these different types of aliens that have been seen and encountered or even types of spirits and um, angels I mean there's just so many they look different they act different they have different um, uh, things that they do in the universe. So when we're talking about that as above, so below gets interesting when you go into the deep depths of the ocean, when you go into the deep depths of the ocean and all these weird fish that they're finding, even some of the ones that aren't so deep, like there's footage, man, there's like shape shifting, uh, octopuses. They're like, there's octopus that, um, change color and they can camouflage and cloak and all of that stuff. And then you see similar things, stargazing. You see ships 
You see beings in the night sky that can fly and cloak, that can go clear. Seeing things flying around that you can see through. Very interesting. You can see through them. There's fish like that. There's fish you can see all the way through them. All you see, all, all you see is their organs. You know, when they eat something, you can see it in their stomach. There's um, fish with lights on their head. They have, they light up. I mean, there's just all types of crazy stuff. That shape shift and that pose and they adapt to the environment. Same thing in heaven. The angels, the aliens, the spirits, elementals, whatever you want to call them, they're out there, man. And they mirror the ocean. It's awesome. It's crazy. There's, there's, um, beings and there's craft that mirror stingrays. They look like stingrays. It looks like a stingray flying in the sky. Phantoms. It's really interesting. The principle of vibration. Nothing rests. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. Everything is moving sound. Man, get in the sound. Your mind's going to be blown. What is it called, man? What is the, uh, shoot, cymatics? I want to do that myself. I understand it. I understand the 432 frequency. I understand that there's certain tones, certain pitches, especially going into meditation. This is key. Uh, there's th different tones that you can play that bring forth healing to your body, repair your DNA, and things like that. As you hear the sound, everything is moving. But getting into cymatics, you have these different shapes. And many of you have probably seen documentaries with this. Chimatica is a good one. They, and there's just there's a bunch of them. Everybody talks about this. But, um, man, Dr. Emoto's Rice Experiment. Dr. Emoto's Rice Experiment that... We're made up of water, atoms, we're moving, vibrating, our body is. The Dr. Emoto Rice Experiment is where uh, you greet this uh, container of rice and water. You greet it with a blessing. Hello, I love you. You look great. It's so good to see you. I'm glad that you're here. You're such a blessing. One in the middle, you leave it alone. Don't say nothing to it. And then another one where you curse it. You're stupid. I can't believe that you're still here. Nobody likes you. Everybody thinks you should die. Everybody think, Everybody's been talking about you and nobody likes you. And over a 30-day period or however long, we, we actually did this. The Dr. Moto, Emoto Rice Experiment. We did it. And I, I had the video. I, may, I still have pictures, but I had the video on my old channel. Um, and after 30 days... The one that we were blessing and speaking blessings to, um, it fermented a little bit, turned brown, but it still looked good. That's what rice does. Um, the other one that stayed that we didn't do anything to, it um, it, it, it started looking bad. As looks started looking bad, had mold on it, things like that. The one we were cursing um, was disgusting. Like it um had mold all in it it turned green it started growing all kind of nasty stuff in it and like out it was just disgusting man we had to get it out the house um but it worked after 30 days so much so that i ended up like feeling bad about um cursing this thing like i knew what i was doing i didn't want to utter those words you know, and they, they've, they've been they've been doing this study in school with uh, in schools with uh, plants. And you can you can find that. Let me see. Um, let me just Google it. Speaking to plants school. Let's see. Talking to plants. Let's see. Experiment. Bizarre experiment shows how talking to plants can see them thrive. Um, yeah, they're doing this in schools and I'll. um. I don't know how much I want to play on here because they'll, you know, mess my video up for doing that. But I mean, you can look it up for yourself. Definitely look up the, the Dr. Emoto Rice experiment. Um, they featured it in a documentary that was on Netflix uh, called Water. 
I think it's called Water, the Great Mystery. And it talks about how there's life in the water and what uh, messes up the quality of the water and how to get your water. And I got friends who are really big on spring water and um, uh, alkaline water and things like that. And so it actually has energy in it. Let's see. Where is this thing at right here? So anyway, here's the here's the um, let's see if I play it. Okay. Verbal bullying it talks about. So they've done this. Okay, so this one's at IKEA. Yeah. Okay, this was done at IKEA where they're selling plants and stuff. Come by each day and say, what's it say? Let's see. Clicking all over the place. So there's messages that are played on loop and they're telling people to compliment it and talk crap to it and Let's see. Let me get, go through the end of it. Let's see. Here's the end. Okay. Look at that. Come on. I'm trying to pause it. And this is very interesting. That your words are vibration. That your words have power. The Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. That you create as you speak. The ancient phrase abracadabra. When a magician was going to perform a feat and a trick, pull a rabbit out of a hat, whatever, he says abracadabra. That's a Kabbalistic term. It means I create it as I speak it. That's the truth. You create as you speak. Whatever reality, whatever type of day, you, pro you got to prophesy over yourself. Prophesy over your visions. Prophesy over your dreams. Prophesy over your family, your friends, your children, and see things start to change. See, it. if you see it in your mind's eye, you can speak it out and create it. That's part of this whole shamanism where we're able to go into the spirit realm, go into the imagination and see a vision, what God has for us, and then be able to see it through, work with God on creating that. Part of it is speaking it. There's something special in the scriptures when it's talking about salvation and, and, and getting with God. It says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, it's one thing to simply believe it. You can believe whatever you want. There's people who believe all types of theories. There's people who have all these dreams and things, but they haven't told nobody. They haven't started speaking it out. It's something that happens when the visions of the heart and the visions of the mind come into connection with the, the mouth and you audibly speak it out and you create it. Something happens when those two connect. The ideas, the visions of the heart, and you speak it out. Tamu says, water holds memory. It is pure consciousness. Um, David says, Dave, uh, Dave Volkner says, ohms in 432 is awesome. Yep. Ohms. Um, even even ohm, I mean, the whole uh, the anatomy of what that is, is the song of the sun. The sun is vibrating, making a noise, and it sounds like the ohm. It is the song of the sun. The Bible says all creation it's praising the most high. The Bible says that if you cease to praise God, that the rocks will cry out. How are the rocks going to cry out? I used to see in my head when reading that scripture, the rocks opening up, singing praises to God, singing <laughs> worship songs, you know. Um, but through vibration, the, the rocks have a song too. The crystals have a song. The earth has a song. The trees have a song. There are microphones where you can record this and listen to it back play them all together in symphony. I believe they're singing praises to the creator, as the Bible says. Um, and then when we join with that, if we join with the ohms, if we join with the chants, if we join with the worship songs, whatever it is, or we sit in silence and we connect with that. Pythagoras talks about the music of the spheres and even the planets are making these noises and this, this sound and these tones praising God. That's where you get the Pythagorean theorem from. String theory, playing the guitar, vibration, sound, what works together, what goes, what doesn't. There's pictures of these tones. There's pictures of these words playing over and over where uh, water has been frozen and the uh, geometric shape, the geometric pattern that it makes are these really beautiful, sacred geometry looking things right it's really uniform 
when it's playing a tone, a certain frequency, and you freeze it, it freezes at that shape. That's what the cymatics is, right? Um, but they've done it with loud noises, drop tones, other tones or whatever that are not good. They make you feel bad. When somebody plays it, it makes you feel bad. There's other tones when they play it in this other frequency, this other pitch. It makes you feel good. And they have pictures of what these look like. The ones that are the ones that make you feel bad, right? These lower tones, for the most part, they look like confusion when you when you f- freeze them or you get a picture of what they look like through cymatics by taking uh, anybody can do it. I, I'm going to do it. Um, you, you can get a you can get a balloon. You can get some type of plastic or uh, certain pans. There's some that are really expensive um, that you can get that a lot of people use the professionals. But I've seen there's DIY stuff on YouTube where you just take that balloon, hold it over maybe a PVC pipe get it on there really tight uh make you another layer where you can put water on there or uh salt you can put salt or sand anything that's going to respond to the vibration that you can see it and then you put a speaker up under the pipe you put a speaker on there so that the sound is coming through and uh and you get this and it actually when you play the sound loud enough the water moves um, the, the sand moves, the salt moves, or whatever, and it forms these geometric patterns, sacred geometry, sound. Find out what they do, colors, get with that stuff, man, and it, it, it'll change your life, man. So there's music, too. Like, there's there's apps for the phone where people, um, it automatically changes whatever song you're playing on your phone. It raises the pitch to the 432 uh, concert frequency. It raises the pitch for you. So whatever you're listening to, if it's in that lower, darker pitch, you can listen to a darker song or negative song, but you listen to it with that 432 pitch and it it just feels like it's something good. Right. But the but the lyrics are bad, you know, and they have it. And there's people who have made those um, on on like YouTube for anything you could. I've seen like Atlantis Moore set in 432 where they've raised it and re uploaded her music at that tool. That feels good to listen to Tool at 432, all that stuff. I've tried to do some of my stuff, and as an artist, I don't like the way it sounds after the fact that it's made because it raises my – I use a lot of ticks, you know what I'm saying, in, in the beats and stuff, and so it it um, it um makes them sound really, really high, so it's almost tinny when it does that. So the, the experiences that, that I've done to my music with that uh, – experiences that I've – experiments I've done with my music have done that, and I really didn't like the sound. But I, I put a lot of that stuff in there anyway. Some of the uh, instruments are in 432, um, the chanting and all that stuff that's kind of mixed in there. It's kind of done to kind of put you in that trance state anyway. So we can keep going. We could do a whole episode on sound and the voice and show you, man, um, the word. The word became flesh, creating it as you speak it, creating entities and in, in birthing them through a topa by creating it in your mind and speaking to it and man all types of weird wild stuff that goes on with the word and this is the spoken word what about the written word man what about the golems where the story of the golems come from being able to write these incantations and and drawing these magical symbols and bringing things to life the golem the mud man that's where you get the story from frankenstein really um Let's look here. Next we have, let's see, full right. Okay, next we have the uh, principle of polarity. Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths, and all paradoxes must be reconciled. That's deep, man. And that's just like what I said a while ago. For for one thing to be true, the opposite has to be true. It has to be. Someone I see is commenting on here says, uh, I saw, talked about the, 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 the spoken word, the written word, and says the living word, Christ. Amen. Um, For one thing to be true, the opposite has to be true. There's polarity in everything. That's the whole thing, man. And most of us have to get out of that thinking. I think religion, 
um, messes a lot of us up. And it took me years to get out of it. Maybe even still trying to get out of it to, to different degrees. Um, this is God. That's God. Oh, that's not God. All is God. The Lord is one. Here, O Israel, the Lord is one. The Lord is all. There's nothing that exists that God isn't in, that Jesus isn't in. Um, the Bible says, behold, I'm the Lord thy God. I create good and evil. Wait, 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 wait. God doesn't create evil. The devil creates. No. What? The devil creates things? He creates evil? No. The Lord, the Lord does it. He may use your devil to do it. He may use you to do it. But the Lord orchestrates it all. Everything. So if God creates something um, or something is expressed, there's spirits who go out and do it. But guess what? They get their orders from somewhere else. They don't have no power to create. They just have the power to manipulate. Um, Adam Starseed Bay says duality and polarity is the divine order of life. This is what people struggle so much with the self. And I'm telling you, like in religion, we, like I said, we're talking about this is God. That's not God. And we're like compartmentalizing what's God. Secular music. Is it God like trying to listen to only Christian music? Well, what about this secular music that makes me feel good? What about what about I, I, I sing these songs to God as I'm singing these secular songs? And it's just weird, you know, saying different um, dichotomies that we're told in the church to stay away from this, stay away from that, stay away from this. And, um, and God uses everything. That's what he does, man. He's an OG. He uses everything to uh, to draw us into himself and to reveal his glory to us. Um, so let's see. Uh, a battery, positive and negative. Positive and negative polarity, polarities united. Let it go, but don't never try to fight it. The veil is ripped, so we journey behind it. In the silence that we find solace, I close my eyes and disappear within the darkness. Who am I? I'm here to impart this, and they don't really want a war with the prophets. Bid the elements well on their travels. Thought forms that your mind can't handle. Never mind when the mind is baffled as a silver cord unravels. Polarities, positive and negative, the yin and the yang. Whether you want to call it God and the devil, whether you want to call it good and bad, righteousness and wickedness, you know what I'm saying? Like they exist to complement each other. It's the contrast. I've been talking about this. I'm going to continue to talk. Thank God for the contrast. Jesus is the contrast. He lets you know. They talk about the seesaw, the balance in all things. Duality. I embrace the duality, not fighting it, not trying to stay away from it. That's not Christian. That's not God. That's not this. You're going to drive yourself mad. You're going to drive yourself mad. Because God is calling you to deeper, deeper levels. And you're like, no, this isn't God. This can't be. This can't be. No, no, no. I'm telling you, you try to fight God on your calling and say, what is God? And and I hear you are. The Bible says, call no man good or evil. Call no man unclean. Call nothing. The Lord has purified everything, whatever it is. It might not be beneficial for you, but it's there. And nothing in and of itself is, is wicked or evil. Call no man clean or unclean. The Lord has purified it all. Um, the principle of gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. I mean, in our day of age, I guess they're trying to they're trying to change that. They're trying to add genders and multiple and all this the hermaphrodite and the original man was the hermaphrodite and all kinds of weird things. But as far as gender, man, even the the qualities of the mother and the father, we I look at God the father. Some people have a hard time of looking at God as a father. Some people get mad when I say that God is a man. God is that this. God is not a man, but it's the masculine and feminine. God is there in the in, in, in the feminine as well for me through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. It's the motherly aspect of God. If God is the father or you perceive him as the father, it's the hand of hand of correction. Let me teach you. Let me impart. And then sometimes when the father gets on to you, the mother, come on, son, it's OK. You know, he loves you. He's still in the Holy Spirit nurtures you like a loving mother it's in all things 
even in God. The principles of rhythm. Everything flows in and out. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swings and manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the, is the, measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. Find your rhythms. Get in that rhythm. The flow state, that's a rhythm. You can get in. I, I enter it during the podcast at times. Start flowing. And there's a rhythm of God. You know when the Lord is speaking through you. You know when God is animating you. That we, You know when you're prophesying. You're speaking as the oracles of God. You know it. Not all the time. Not all the time. The word doesn't return void. If you're speaking the, the uh, righteous word of God, that never returns void. That's prophesying in and of itself. Of, of, of just... Uh, declaring the righteousness of God declaring the victories of God that's prophesying in and of itself everybody can do that everybody can prophesy Corinthians uh, 2 Corinthians 14 31 but not all may be prophets but you may all prophesy one by one so that you may be edified and it says that Jesus is the spirit of prophecy that it's about exhortation and edification to build people up never to tear someone down never to make a mockery and make them look like a fool but jesus is the spirit of prophecy to love and bring forth restoration healing and speak faith to see those things that are not as though they were prophesying unto the valley of dry bones with your voice there's a spoken word speak to those bones are dead it's an there, there has been. They used to be a great army, but God's raising up another army. No, no, no. This army. God's not done yet. As long as there's air in our breath, air in our lungs, there's power, there's pneuma, there's a spirit, there's prana, the yama, it's the life force. As long as that's still there, there's still hope. We can prophesy over our situation, prophesy over those dead bones, that they will become a great army again. There's the vision of Ezekiel. Prophesy over your marriage. Prophesy over your vision, man. You waiting for somebody else to do it? Sometimes we are. That's a weird thing. I'm still waiting for people to come on to help me who ain't who ain't showed up yet. You know, <laughs> if you want something done, you got to do it yourself. You know, and God sends people to you, but don't wait. If you're waiting, I remember, and this is a weird thing. We're coming out of the church. You know, we 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 spent a lot of time in prayer. Not coming out of the church. This was in church, but there were seasons where we would pray for each other and 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 be looking for reasons to pray. That's just what we did, man. And um, there were seasons where nobody would pray for us. Like we would, you know, nobody cared. If it maybe felt like nobody cared, or we'd be going through stuff and we're looking for prayer. Maybe he's too scared to ask for it and stuff. And then you feel like. Um, I don't know if you feel abandoned, but you you kind of feel like people don't care because nobody's asking to pray and you're carrying all these burdens and stuff uh, because you're not releasing them. You're not praying over yourself. You're not seeking the Lord for yourself to get that stuff off of you. So uh, I remember going through seasons like that, man. But if you want to get that stuff off of you, sometimes you got to release it. I'm some of the biggest, most of the biggest times in my life where um, I've had spirits loosed off of me or been or had trials, I had uh you know, the weight lifted off of me that I was trying to carry myself and not telling anybody. It was when I confessed it. A lot of times it was in front of people. You know, you don't want to confess it. You're doing, holding stuff in, doing stuff wrong. The more you hold it in, it's just going to sit there. And we're waiting for somebody, a prophet who can call it out. And trust me, they can. They can read your mail. Um, but if you're waiting for a prophet, you might be waiting a while. <laughs> There's few and far between, it seems like, these days. But, um... You know, if you want something done, you got to do it. If you want freedom, you got to go get it. You got to get it. You got to do the work. You got to put in the work. If you believe in something enough, you will. And that's the proof that you want it because you won't give up. When you should have gave up, when everybody else around you gave up, you didn't. You really wanted it. You're not there just because. It's because you really wanted it. Dave Volkner, I, be I believe that we are all created through Christ. In a journey is discovering how we can all be connected to him through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, we're definitely, man. I mean, uh, the book of John, 
you know, talks about he is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Is that only Christians? Is that I think it's I think that's quite literal. Every man that cometh into the world and woman, woman. Principle of rhythm. We have the principle of cause and effect, and a lot of these I think tie together, right? Every cause has an, its effect. Every effect has its cause. Cause and effect, chain of events. I think that's Joe Diffie. First concert I ever went to. It it is. <laughs> Going, I'm, the first concert I went to was a uh, Joe Diffie concert. My mom took me. I was probably like eight, seven or eight. To me, the concert it was free. It was like a big outside outside event, and it was weird, man, because like it was the first time being around a bunch of country people. <laughs> I was out of my element. I'm listening. You know, I'm a little kid. I'm still listening to Metallica, Beastie Boys, MC Hammer, Vanilla Ice. You know that kind of stuff. I listen to the Ninja Turtles soundtrack. You know what I'm saying? Listen to the Coming Out of Our Shells tour where the Ninja Turtles actually had a band. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Okay. Anyway, went to this country concert, Joe Diffie, and there was this guys with little tight, tight pants on back in like '94, whatever year it was, and they're all like got these boots on they're tapping their toe and they're just clapping big old hats on i'm like this is so weird because i like that i like that song i like joe diffie so I, I sung those songs as a kid but um first concert ever um cause and effect it reminds me of those lyrics um everything happens according to law chance is but a name for law not recognized there are many planes of causation but nothing escapes the law uh -huh. Grim, Grim's comment and go ninja, go ninja, go, go, go. I got a story about that, you know. <laughs> I was diehard Ninja Turtles. I went to uh, I went to school and it was for Halloween. I was in man, I think I was in the first grade, and I dressed up like Michelangelo. They had this the the uh, you know, the little bandana, the orange bandana. It had a nose on it, big old turtle nose. It had like a turtle shell backpack. It had a turtle uh uh. <laughs> It had all, I was a Ninja Turtle, right? And I went there, uh, I went to school at Tuck, Tucker Elementary in Louisiana. And uh, I got in a fight with some kid. I don't even know why. Some kid, we was about to fight. All the other kids uh, joined around me. And there was a made a circle. And we were about to fight in the circle. We were getting ready. I'm trying to emulate what I've seen on the movie. I'm a Ninja Turtle too. I've got the, the, the gear on. I'm ready to get it in. And then everybody starts singing, go ninja, go ninja, go, 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 go ninja, go ninja. And I was like, oh, it's my time. And I don't think we fought, but we were getting ready to. And I just rem remember those <laughs> weird stories. Don't Y'all are getting me off, man. Um, I had to share that. So let's see. What's up, Christy Lee? Christy Lee says, pull the dart out of your back. Bless the person, people. Um, for the experience and praise God for having your back. Yeah, there's a uh, the scripture. Let me find this scripture. I used to quote it. I, I don't know. I see. You know, it talks about the uh, the armor of God, right? And I always heard it said that um, putting on the full armor of God, and it talks about that. But it talked. There was this understanding that the soldiers they had the breastplate. They had the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, um, the breastplate of righteousness. I think it's the shoes of the gospel of peace, I think it is, right? And so it's this warrior, this picture of this warrior, um, who's ready to go to battle. He's winning spiritual warfare. But there was this idea that the breastplate didn't cover the whole thing. I know in like some Romans they had them that did, but there was this idea. I don't even know if it's true that um, it was just the front for the for the breastplate. But I think it may have it just whatever culture. I mean, they're all different. Depends. I mean, this is ancient Hebrew, so probably had like cloth and bones and stuff. I don't know. Um, but Isaiah fifty two twelve says, "For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight." For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will will be your rear guard. Rear guard. This is really interesting. 
Um, most versions here, as I'm looking at this, say um, the Lord will be your rear guard. That's how I remembered it. <clears throat> Another one says that the, the God of Israel will protect you from behind. Don't worry about looking back. The Bible r r tells you, don't look back. Never look back. You can't put your hand to the plow and look back. What I used to be. What might have been. I try not to think about what might have been. Because that was then. And we had. Hey, come on. Don't sing that song. Don't think about what might have been, man. The Lord will go before you. The God of Israel will be your rear guard. Another one says the God of Israel will protect you from behind. A lot of that rear guard. God's got your back. I remember a gospel rap song back in the day. Who got your back? God. Who got your back? God. You know. But there's this other version here that's kind of kind of new to me. But um, it says the God of Israel will be your reward. That's that kind of changes it, right? The Lord, the God of Israel, will be your reward. That's that's good too. <clears throat> but I think that's it's a difference there. Hmm. A lot of different versions say a lot of different things, but the principles are still there. He will, man. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? But that for me is about, I, I haven't read the Kabbalion. I need to read it. I've watched Kamatica, which goes into a lot of details on the Kabbalion, but I've never actually read it. The Hermetic Principles, and I know those seven Hermetic Principles, and I think they're great. I really do. Um so let's see if anybody has any more questions because I think uh, I've reached the point of what I was trying to talk about. Let's see. Um, C says, what would you say to those people whom say that the Kundalini is evil? Uh, see, the whole thing with that Kundalini stuff, man, and I'm going to tell you this. So I was at the uh, I was at I was there at the forefront of that stuff in the churches. Now, it's probably thousands of videos on it. Um, but early on, there was a minister that I followed. His name was Andrew Strom. He was a revivalist. Um, and this was probably, let me, if I was to guess, 2006, 2000, no, it might have been 2000, around 2008 or so. Um, let's see. Uh, Tamu is asking, um, I would love to have you as a guest on my channel, Truth Seeker. How can I contact you? Uh, just uh, go to my website, truthseeker.com. There's a uh, contact form there. I'd love to come on. Um, but about around 2008, the revivalist Andrew Strom, I followed a lot of his work. We taught his Bible studies at our, we had a little small church that we met at that I was like to head over. It was called the Awakening Church in Mobile, Alabama. Or somebody let us use their building and we were growing and we were meeting two, three times a week for Bible study and then going out street preaching on the streets. Right. This is about 2008. Following a lot of Andrew Strom stuff. He had a lot of good stuff, you know, little little things about the church and how, um, you know, the, the most churches in the West are ran by one man. Like you have the pastor who is over everybody and just the way that that's not the biblical. Um, biblical example of the body at all there was never a one-man show there was always a staff there was always a five-fold ministry that works together for a reason the prophet the preacher the teacher the evangelist and then people who are uh, anointed in the ministry of helps and people who and it, it works together for a reason and when you get together with people like that in a body it happens a lot in small groups and prayer meetings when those people work together versus you have one man who wants to be the teacher or wants to be the center of attention. When you get in the spirit and you work together, man, you can like the prophet can tell what the Holy Spirit's saying, what the spirit is doing. They're focused on that. The teacher can teach it. The apostle can oversee like everything just kind of works together as a body. And that's how it's supposed to be. And so Andrew Strom really emphasized that and had a really good teaching about it. So I was really, I listened to his stuff, you know, while I was driving and, and all that stuff. So anyway, he did the teaching and it's the biggest one on YouTube. I mean, um, and it's taught, it's called the Kundalini invades the church. Um, and this was in 2008, you know, early, still the early days of YouTube, essentially bad quality videos and, 
bad editing, but he did pretty good. So anyway, he just did an interview where he just gave this long, he come out of the charismatic movement, talking in tongues, rolling on the floor, you know, all that kind of stuff, miracles and signs and wonders, which like any movement can get into chaos and get into weird stuff happens. Um, he started speaking against it. And he left the charismatic church because it got too crazy. You know, the, the laughing movement came and all types of, you know, the thing. There was a movement. You guys can look this up if you don't know. But there's something called the Toronto Blessing, the Azusa Street Revivals, where it got really weird. It got really weird. I mean, really, 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 really weird, actually. Um, and most of the times they do. If they're not organic, if. You got. You still have to be careful. You know what I'm saying. You have to have overseers. You have to. Have, and it, it got weird. You had people crawling on the ground in churches, uh, wearing ties, and their, um, their wives and stuff were leading them around by their tie like a dog, um, saying that that's how God leads them around, and they would bark, and say so they would bark for God, and if they stepped out in faith and barked, then the Holy Spirit would move. It got really weird. Todd Bentley, you know, this this was early on. A lot of churches kind of mimicked that movement. Brownsville Revival came. I was a part of that. Changed my life. Amazing encounters there. But if you, you have to be careful. You know, sometimes you go over the, over the edge. Sometimes you miss the mark, right? Um, but anyway, so that was happening with the charismatic movement. Andrew Strom comes out of it he says look i've wiped my hands of that stuff i know god still heals i know god still moves in the spirit but not like that i mean that's where most churches uh, churches are now god still moves but not like that god still speaks but not like that like we do it but not like that and so every and that's the whole contention where all these churches and all these people feel like they're the ones who have it right how you know all these different denominations and they're the only one who's got it right all the other churches and denominations have a piece of the truth but we have the bigger chunk so follow us you know trust me that that's like an unspoken rule that you build your ministry off of i try to stay away from that and god starts blessing it so hey i'm good i don't have to name call and point fingers and stay away from unless unless it's needed and sometimes it is needed so anyway Andrew Strom come out of the charismatic revivals and begin to speak against it, but still believed it. And so he did that documentary. Um, it's an interview of him talking about the Kundalini uh, invades the church. And let me just, I'll pull it up. Kundalini and I invades. And I was a big follower of him um, at that time. Kundalini warning. Looks like there's even a put out a book on it. Um, but okay. And I don't even know if this is the, the, the original video, but the original video blew up. Um, it's on YouTube. There is a book. Andrew Strom ended up putting out a book on it, updated the edition in 2015. Uh, Our False Spirits Invading the Church. So he showed, he talked about the Kundalini and the characteristics of what it is and what it looks like and it's a foreign spirit these weird words that we foreign spirit that invaded the church and then they would show um these videos of brownsville of azusa street of toronto blessing of todd bentley with all these crazy manifestations right you know when you get into energy you're gonna get crazy manifestations it's it's going to you're going to cry. You might scream. You might shake. You might twitch. You might fall on the floor. You might roll. A demon comes out of you. It, it might happen like you don't know. You're going to get weird manifestations. I mean, um, and so a lot of that stuff's recorded from these bless these uh, uh, church services. So he took that stuff and um, he, he took that stuff and he uh, made a documentary and said, OK, and he showed similarities between Kundalini Awakening, these big services where these gurus would do the Kundalini Awakening or do Kundalini Yoga and uh, lay hands on people just like they do in a church. And the manifestations where people shaking and crying and twitching. And there were times where people would go and they would shake their head for days. They're called Kriyas. He talks about it in the thing. And where, you know, days after, 
um, a kundalini awakening or whatever, the person's twitching their head because that energy is still being released. They're still getting a secretion of that energy, that, that energy up their spine, and it and it makes you twitch. It gives you a weird manifestation. I've talked to, there, and it got in the church. I mean, there were times where um, you'd be talking to people mid conversation. My old pastor, who I interviewed on here, he would yell out "Hey" in the middle of 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 preaching or middle of conversation when he felt that jolt of the Holy Spirit. He let out a "Ugh, hey, hey!" You know, you'd yell, and this was a common thing. A lot, and it got really weird. If you go back to the early um, Jesus culture stuff, Kim Walker Smith. I loved their music, but it was a time. That was a time where I came against this stuff, and I was with Andrew Strom and blah 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 blah. Um, and the early Jesus culture music, you hear Kim Walker Smith yelling out this "Hey." In the middle of her sentences, she'll be singing and then she would yell, hey, or ha ha, this weird laugh, right? And, you know, there were times where churches would shut down because everybody's laughing. The spirit of joy comes in. And so Andrew Strong would relate that back to the Kundalini. They say that's not the Holy Spirit. That's the Kundalini. And so I, I was on this kick for a while. I've in- encountered those um, bodily manifestations. I've seen all the charismatic craziness i've been a part of it and uh and i wanted something more biblical something more sound something more easy and so i got into that for some time for me um and i and i know i'm this is i have a bunch on this i'm, I'm gonna have to make this a segment or something but for me i was speaking against it the whole any, any type of bodily manifestation any falling out any crying any screaming any shaking i said that was demonic i was following andrew strom's teachings and stuff um I said, that's the Kundalini. Kundalini invaded the church. You don't see in the Bible where this happened. There's some cases where, you know, little things happen where people fell back when Jesus came and different stuff like that. Um, And, you know, these people are not um, drunk with wine. They thought the people were all drunk when the Holy Spirit came and stuff. And so there's just some little things there. But for the most part, the Bible really doesn't uh, go into a lot of detail on a lot of this stuff. So I came against it. I ended up going to a church out in Pensacola, Florida, a small black church when I was against it. And I was going to be uh, ministering there. I was going to be doing some music and sharing my testimony. And they got into playing those drums. Doots, 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 doots. And then this Holy Spirit revival broke out in this little black church, man. And I looked over at the pastor. I knew the pastor. And he was buckled over screaming. They were praying for him. He's, ah, ah. He's shaking. And, there, and other people are crying. He's like... My friends were with me, Watchmen, and the voice was with me there. And they're like, man, what's up with the pastor? And I'm like, man, he's birthing something in the spirit, man. And quite literally, I, I believe he was. Um, but um, that was happening. And I was against that stuff at the time. I was like, man, this is craziness, man. Ain't no word coming forth, man. What is this? You know, God is not the author of confusion. This is confusing, you know. Anyway, the pastor came up to me, and he... um. He stood next to me and he gave me a hug. He grabbed my hand and gave me a hug. And when he did, man, I felt that transfer and the Holy Spirit broke me down. And I just, and what it was on him come upon me and it was beautiful. It was the Holy Spirit and uh, brought me down. It was like, you know, almost like he did in the scriptures with Paul. Was, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? This is what I'm doing. And you're saying it's demonic. You're saying it's this. And that. And God broke me and I hit, hit my knees and buckled and fell upon the altar and, um, um, snot nose in the carpet and just crying, man, and the Holy Spirit cleaning out, you know, the inside and doing that good work within me, man. And those times are beautiful. So, and from that moment on, I stopped persecuting it and kind of went and, and kind of, you know what I'm saying, reneged and apologized to my friends and apologized to the Holy Spirit. You know, that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It's for those manifestations to happen and you to say that it's demonic. It's not the other way around. Even with um, the Kundalini awakening and all of these people in the churches, they'll say that uh, these people are doing this stuff and it's demonic. It's not of God. That's blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. That's what they did to Jesus. Jesus was healing people, and I'm sure there was manifestations. Jesus was healing people, and they say, that's, that's the devil. He's doing it by the order of Beelzebub. He's full of demons. 
Look at him. The only way he can heal people is if he have, has demons. Or look at him. He's touching people and they're falling out under the glory. The only way he can do that is if he has a spirit. And so this is the type of thinking that, that Christians are doing, not knowing that they're blaspheming the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, attributing to God, attributing to Satan the works that God is doing. That's in the Bible. That's and that's what these people are doing when they see the Kundalini stuff or the, it's not Kundalini. It, it's whatever you want to call it. That's where we're at now. It just it, it's energy. It, it is the Kundalini. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the Pranayama. It is the life force. It is the Tachyon energy in Egypt. It is the Chi energy. You can feel it when you breathe. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the breath of God and you can breathe in and feel that energy, that life run through. Through your body, through your veins, you can feel it fill up your lungs. It's all the same thing. People want to compartmentalize and say, this is God. That's not God. This is God. That's not. And you're going to find yourself in a whole world of trouble, stooped in religion. And so that's what Andrew Strom brought in 2008 or so, brought that to the table with that documentary. It blew up. It got big. And then everybody started making their own, right? Um, but early on, I made one. I had a, a fellow on my show, The Awakening Podcast. Right after that, um, probably 2010, actually. And um, we talked about the Kundalini being the Holy Spirit and where it comes from, the terminology, the Hindi words, the, 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 the um, Sanskrit, the word where it comes from. Uh, veil your energy and a weird thing with symbology i mean the christians like it's it's called the the uh the serpent energy right and so christians think serpent think devil serpent energy devil energy serpent energy demonic energy so you're releasing a demonic energy that's already within you you are fearfully and wonderfully made everything about your anatomy your dna it mirrors heaven it's beautiful. God didn't put no secrets in you. If you unlock it, the devil's come. No, that's all outside stuff. Everything is within you. The kingdom of heaven is within. Everything that you need is in here. Breathe in the breath of the life. Do it. I'm telling you. So it's nothing coming from the outside. The serpent symbolism in Egypt, they had it on the, uh, the headdress coming out of the pineal gland or the third eye, which symbolized that they were... A, were awakened it symbolizes wisdom the bible says be ye harmless uh, be ye wise as doves but harmless as i'm sorry harmless as serp <laughs> harmless as doves wise as serpents in the ancient world serpents symbolized wisdom when everyone was sick with the hebrews moses grabbed a serpent, put it on a stick. And God said, if you hold the stick up with the serpent upon it, everybody who looks upon that symbols, they will be healed. Moses holds up the staff. The serpent is around the staff. It is the, conduce, uh, the caduceus s symbology. He holds up the staff, the medical, and they were healed. The medical community still uses that symbology. That that's their logo. I've got it tattooed on my arm. Um, for awakening, for healing, the energy rises up out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. People ask me all the time, am I a nurse or whatever? Because they see that and a lot of nurses have that. But, you know, so it's all the same thing, man. I made a documentary with this guy. I, I did a podcast interview and I, I named it early on. And I got a lot of views on this because it was still new. There wasn't a lot of people talking about it. I seen what Andrew Strom did, did my own studies, did my own stuff, interviewed this guy, broke down the, the symbology, broke down the terms, the virya energy, the coiled energy. It, it, it refers to a serpent because it's coiled and it springs forth like a serpent would jump and strike. And it's the same way, like the Holy Spirit. No kundalini, no nothing. You mean to tell me you can be alone in your bedroom praying? You could be alone in the church or with a group of Christians at church. And you say, Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit, your beautiful Holy Spirit, which you give freely. I'm asking you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
and then these things start happening. It's up. Like, that's a demon. You missed it. What? You're crazy. You're delusional. You're compartmentalizing this stuff. You want to be right. You're alone praying, asking for the Holy Spirit. You begin to shake. You begin to tremble. I know people where a wind blew through their house, a chill, oil come upon their head. They begin to sweat and burn up. Nobody's touching them. No, it's just them and God. God fills them with the Holy Spirit. They begin to cry. They begin to weep. They begin to scream. Uh, they fall to their knees and buckle, and God cleanses it all out. And you mean to tell me, well, that's the kundalini? No. There's kundalini awakenings where people are doing kundalini yoga. They're doing chi exercises. And the same thing happens. I'm reading the descriptions for this stuff. And they're the same. They're the same. I'm reading what happens with a kundalini awakening. And I'm like, oh my God, that happened to me. Like when I asked Jesus to come into my life and forgive me of my sins, like, Wow, that's kind of weird. Is it a coincidence? Is it different? Are they lying? Maybe they're lying. Maybe they're not telling you that other spirits are coming along with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, it's just whatever. There's weird theories out there. You, you, there are tons of videos, right? The Holy Spirit comes in. The Bible says that God is the giver of, of good gifts. And if your earthly parents know how to give you good gifts, how much more your Heavenly Father? How much more? The Bible says that if you ask for a loaf of bread, Father, would you send me a loaf of bread? I'm hungry. And it's symbolic. It's a principle. If you ask for a loaf of bread, God is not going to give you a stone. Here you go, son. Eat that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you ask for fish, it's not going to give you a serpent. You're asking for the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the bread of life. You're asking for fish. You're asking for the Holy Spirit. And he sends you a demon. You guys are crazy. You've lost your mind. If you believe that, that we can innocently ask children, the righteousness of God created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Ask our father. He said, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will give it to you. Ask for the Holy Spirit and he give you something else. You've lost your mind. Whoever you are. That leads us into syncretism. It leads us into looking. Okay, well, let's just at least look at this stuff. Let's look at the fruit. Let's look at what happens after a Kundalini wake, awakening. You know, like. I'm for all the manifestations. I love them. I love feeling that energy. I love feeling the Holy Spirit move through my body cleansing me out, moving, shifting things around. I need it. I still need it. The Bible says be being filled. I can't live off the back of yesterday's successes. I, it's a continual walk with God. Continual. When it's a, I'm, when the Lord moves, you got to move. When the Spirit's moving, you got to move. You have to be so close to the Holy Spirit that you're able to hear what he's doing. That's a daily. It ain't no, that, this happened in 1998 for me. Can't live off of what happened in 98. 20 years ago, my life is still impacted from what happened in 1998. But it's a continual renewal with the walking with God. Syncretism, studying these different faiths, studying these different practices and see what makes us the same. As so long we've been taught in the church to see what makes you different. You're a peculiar people. You're set apart. You're holy. You're different. That's true. But how are we the same? Well, don't worry about that. Worry about how you're different, what set you apart. Well, these people are set apart and different too. We're talking about Billy Graham, talking about the end of his ministry. Billy Graham says God has a people group for himself all over the world. And they may be in Islam. They may have never even heard the name of Jesus, but they're his. They know deep down that they need something other than themselves. And, they, and that's God. And they may have never even heard the name of Jesus for Billy Graham, the greatest evangelist of our day at the end of his ministry to say that he knew something, something's up, man. And then what happens in the church? A lot of them say, oh, yeah, you know, he was a has been. Yeah, but and they just kind of negate everything he's done, his whole ministry, because he was more of a inclusionist at the end of his life, more of a universalist. that Look, Jesus died for everybody. 
Christ, he said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And this is the stance he took at the end of his ministry. And a lot of people, he's getting old, you know, just don't listen to him. Man, this guy served his time. He did. He ran his race. And at the end of his life, he came to this conclusion that the apostles came to, that the disciples came to. In the book of Acts, the Bible says that God is willing to deal with any man as long as they will repent of their sins. Whoever you are. That's the gospel, man. If you'll turn from your wickedness, put your faith and trust in Christ, he's pr provided a sacrifice for you. If you'll do that, he'll deal with you righteously. That's for everybody. If you want to be lost in your sins and, and you're having fun, that's between you and God. But God is willing to deal with any man as long as they will forsake their sin and put their faith and trust in, in what he, he did for them. It's beautiful. It takes the power away from you or the power to be right or the power to say that I'm right and they're wrong. Spirit Wolf, my wife is in the chat, says serpents aren't wholly evil. There's the duality again. Yeah, it it's it's the symbology, man. You have to understand that everything has the duality. We're talking about the serpents, their their wisdom. Or if they're poisonous, you got to be able to tell what kind they are, right? My wife can do that. I can't. You know, when it comes to literal serpents, she'll walk out and pick up a snake. She gets it from her dad. Um, I won't do that, even if I thought I knew. I don't want to get bit. But um, symbology, you look at the lion, right? The Bible says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So you're having dreams, you're seeing symbols of lions and things like that. It's Jesus. He's the lion of Judah. But then again, it says that the enemy walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. There's the, there's the duality. It's not all this or all that. So with the Kundalini, I, um, you know, I've done Kundalini yoga and, um, and it was beautiful. And I feel the Holy Spirit doing Kundalini yoga. I'm not the only one. So um, that video that I did with the, uh, with the guy and uh, it went viral. It, uh, I, viral for me, a hundred thousand views or so, close to that on YouTube. Um, I was set to uh, lead worship with a friend of mine at a church, so our local church we used to go to. And since this thing was kind of getting bigger, they knew I'm in the spirituality and stuff. But uh, this whole Kundalini aspect, everybody's talking about it now. Preachers are talking about it. They have sermons written up on it now. People are taking the, his work and kind of plagiarizing it and preaching it now that it's out there since 2008. And there's tons of videos now. You're going to find tons of videos. Um, but I had one early. And uh, and so what that means is that I was at the top of the search history. When you type in Kundalini in church or Kundalini in Jesus, my video popped up. Um, I was posting on other sites and sharing it. So the, with the search engines and the ranking and stuff, it ranked my video up. Um so if you typed in Kundalini, Jesus, Kundalini Church, you found my video. Uh, some of the people from that church was doing their own research and studying, and then they found my video. And then so for them, that's blasphemy because it's on us on the opposite side. They don't understand. They think that we're attributing to Jesus the work of the enemy or attributing to the enemy the work of Jesus. It kind of works hand in hand, but it's it's a little backward. Anyway, they thought that they asked me not to come to the church and made a big spiel about it and stuff like that. But um that was the video that set me apart um early on. And um uh, and I would I deleted the video and then I I had posted it on forums and people were like, Hey, where's the video? It's not up and I'd re upload it and it would skyrocket again. You know, I went through that thing going back and forth because I wanted to keep doing music. I wanted to keep ministering at churches. I didn't want, you know, I wasn't ready to kind of, I wanted to look back. I wanted to look back. Don't ever look back. You can't look back. So that's the whole Kundalini, Holy Spirit thing, how I'm in, and I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do another video. I'm going to, this is going to be a snippet as well. So I'll label it, throw it out there. I kind of went into the history of the Kundalini and the church and stuff. So, um, you know, they, they, they see these people falling out in the church to see, and there's some powerful experiences. And if you, if you, the weird thing is it works like this. If you're watching it, 
and you're not in the spirit of it, if you're watching a live stream or a video of it as a spectator, it's not, you're not going to get it. But if you're there in the spirit of it, you can get into it and you'll get it. And there'll be people there who are just, they're looking for something wrong. They, they don't, they have the truth and you don't. So, oh, you're doing this. They're not going to get it. When you record some of those things, it kind of works both ways. A lot of times you're not going to get it if you're watching it later. But then again, for some people who really want it, it has the power to pull you there into that realm with them. You're able to kind of travel to there and almost feel like you're there if you want to be like you have that ability um, that happened. I talked to uh, what's his name um, um, from Morningstar, your boy, the, the worship leader from Morningstar Ministries, who was a I mean, they probably Andrew Strong probably got the most clips from his uh, from Morningstar Ministries because they would have leaders who operated under the power of God. And when they spoke, things happened. When they touched people, they fell out and people would res bring messages and it looked tribal. They would play the djembe. They would play the drums, the tambourines and kids were dancing. People were dancing all violently. Like David danced in the Bible. And it was really a tribal atmosphere that they tapped into. So there was a lot of uh, footage from Morningstar Ministries that was on that, that are still in these uh, Kundalini and Holy Spirit, um, videos or kundalini invades the church and the false spirit and it's invading and that kind of stuff so a lot of people were um it still creates that duality because you're watching manifestations and you're like is that god or is that not god i'm all for it i love it it's beautiful again i love the energy i love to tap in uh, we need to do it more you know what i'm saying um but i'm more about the fruit what happens when you get up? Okay, you falling on the floor, rolling, crying, you know, and it happens in churches. It's always happened in churches. In the Pentecostal churches, I've seen it, man. I've seen people, but I want to sit and I want to know what happens when you get up. In Babylon, the women were weeping for Tammuz. It talks about that in the Bible. They're weeping for Tammuz under the symbol of the T, the cross. At the altar, weeping and wailing. I've seen women in church weep and wail at the altar. And it's weird. It's bizarre. All religions do this stuff. All religions speak in tongues. It's called glossalia. They all speak in tongues. They all shake when the energy hits them. They all vibrate. It's very similar. And... That's what opens it up for me with syncretism. It says, look, man, we're not the same. We can't, we're t you know, you can have God, you can't. This is God, this isn't. I'm judging by the fruit, man. That really messed with my head when I started understanding this. And then I seen people of other faiths or people with lack of that were just spiritual walking in Christ consciousness, walking in. And producing the fruit that Jesus produced. Jesus says, judge no man, judge nothing before it's appointed a time, but judge all things according to the fruit. Don't judge me because, hey, hey, I'm a Bible. My name is so-and-so, pastor so-and-so. How you doing? Praise God. How you doing? I'm a pastor. Hey, praise God. He's got a word for you. No, you judge people according to their fruit. I got a friend of mine. And these stories are endless. I shouldn't even get into them. But I got a friend of mine who went and visited a church right down the road, a really big church. They're building this church as we speak, even bigger. They're expanding for the third time. Really um, charismatic pastor. Worship's decent. Um, a friend of mine went and visited. They had a speaker come in. They had a speaker come in. The guy came in, and he spoke, and he was a, a traveling evangelist. The guy was trying to petition her to go out on a date and, like, want to— was going to offer to pay her to come back to the house and massage him and stuff and like weird stuff. Y'all walking in the spirit, y'all Christians, y'all so holy, but you can't discern that these people who are in your pulpits. Again, the dude who led me to the Lord, somebody rebuked them and said, look, y'all in all this prophesying and all these encounters and miracles and gold dust and angel feathers and all this weird stuff you guys are encountering but you can't discern the pedophiles in your church 
that are holding your children right now, y'all are at the altar praying. Your child is sitting in this man's lap. That man is a uh, convicted pedophile and you don't even, you can't even discern it in the spirit, but you're spiritual, right? You judge all things, right? But you can't judge that. The stuff, I love the spirituality. I love the manifestations. I love doctrine. I love the mysteries. But again, the stuff is practical. The stuff that comes back to practicality, man, it's not way off, lost and disillusioned and way out there in the spirit that you're no earthly good, man. So sharpen your gifts. Understand that, look, God is willing to deal with anybody, even you, pastor. If you'll repent, turn from your wickedness, God will deal with you. He'll restore you. Man, God is in the business of restoration. You have to let go of the things that you're holding. You have to confess your sins. You have to get that stuff off of you so he can give you more. You have to let go of what's good to you so he can give you what's better. He can give you what's great. That's how God works. There's a scripture, um, That uh, really helped me going back and forth. Um, really helped me from, from going back and um, forth and thinking that God was done with me and things like that. And even with my name, Truth Seeker, right? You know, I had times where I would go back and forth and I didn't know what the will of the Lord was. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. What's it look like, you know? All of this kind of stuff. Uh, Jeremiah fifteen nineteen is just something I just kept coming back to, and it was like a, for me, it was a uh, it was a go to scripture. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, if thou return, then I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me, and I will take forth, and if thou take forth the precious from the vile, it says thou shalt be as my mouth. Let me return unto thee, but return not unto them. And it says right here, and I will make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord. I'm with thee to, de to deliver thee. Um... Let's see, there was a, um, there's another, um, version that I really like. Let's see, this was one of them. And then the other one, let's see, let me find it. Maybe it's the NIV. Let's see. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you that you may serve, serve me. If you utter worthy and not worthless words. You will be my spokesman. If you repent, I mean, that's a law. If you repent, I will restore you. You have to give that stuff up, man. You have to confess it. You have to, you have to talk to somebody, man. Give it up. That's a law. And I've seen it happen in my life, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of being out there by myself and not knowing which way to go repent turn from your wickedness whatever it is man let the lord restore you let the lord heal you that's what it's about so man how long have we gone an hour and 43 minutes good stuff um tonight we have the school of the mystics 7 p.m central every thursday night we're going to be doing that we're going to break down into groups tonight hopefully we can get in the spirit and practice uh our gifts and our abilities and prophesying and calling out the goodness and the gold in people where people have been told that they were nothing. They were told that the God was done with them. They were told that they'd never be nobody. We're going to practice and see if God will give us a word for them to be able to prophesy and see life come back into them. Whoever it is, if you want to be a part of that, join us every Thursday night, School of the Mystics. Also join that in our uh, um, Discord community as well. Most of the time after the podcast, we hang out in Discord and get into conversation and build community there. And so that's just the lifestyle that we do. Um, practicing prophesying over one another and we do life together that's what it's about um so yeah with that i'm gonna say peace and shalom thank you guys for supporting my work if you'd like to support 
please head on over to patreon.com backslash truth seeker link is in the description um you get access to a lot of really cool stuff so with that i'm gonna say peace and shalom and i hope y'all have a good day to you my friend peace Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.